Welcome back to another Natron video tutorial. In this video, we're going to be animating a logo onto the screen, animating it off, and having some text uh, appear on the screen. There'll be a background involved. Basically, we're using all the skills that we've learned thus far in our Natron uh, tutorial series. So if you skip some of those or if you're unclear about some of them, go ahead and go back and watch those and then come back to this video. We're not necessarily going to be learning anything new. We're just going to be going over everything we've already learned and doing it rather quickly to create one complete project start to finish. We're going to render it out. Um, so it should be a very good uh, practice to go over everything that we've learned. So first, let's look at our project settings. Uh, by default, this is everything's default. I just barely opened up Natron. So we have 1920 by 1080. We're going to leave that. We have 250 frames total, starting at 1, ending at 250, and playing at 24 frames per second. So doing some basic math, we can figure if it's 24 frames every second, after 10 seconds, if we take 24 times 10, it'll be 240 frames. So that's pr pretty close to 250. So this total project will be about a 10 second animation if we leave things exactly the same here, which we're going to do. Let's just leave it. So to get started, let's read in our first image. We're going to read in the background image. It's good if your background image is the same size uh, as your project, which ours is. It's a 1920 by 1080 image. And our project's 1920 by 1080, so perfect. So I brought it in here. I didn't have my viewer selected when I imported it, so we're going to have to tie it in ourselves. So we'll left click and drag to the viewer, and now we can see the background. Uh, but actually, we're doing a merge node anyway, so let's add in another read because we want to read in our logo. So we can see what that looks like. Okay, cool. So we've got our logo here. We can see each of them separately. If we want, we can just see them we can have this one and two, and we can press one and two on the keyboard, oops, and toggle so that we can see them like that. One, two. Uh, when, when no node is selected, if we just hit one and two, we can see whatever's connected to the viewer. But we want to merge them together. So we're going to get a merge node, which are these merge nodes here. Left click on merge. We'll bring in a merge node. Now, because I had. For whatever reason, I, th I didn't think I had it selected, but it, it thinks it just automatically connected a read node to the merge node. And we didn't want that because we don't want the A connected here. We want this to be B because this is our background. If we go to the merge node and look at the settings and we hover over the operation, it tells us what's going on to create that. This is the over operation. And if you look down at over, it says it's doing A plus B. So the A whatever's on A is going to be laid over top of whatever's on B. So we want whatever B is should be the background then. That's why B is always background when you're doing over on a merge node. And then the A is always going to be the on top thing. We'll drag that to the viewer. So now we see our background is like kind of like the bottom layer, the under layer. And then this uh, other image is the over, is the over top. And this merge node is merging them together in, using the over operation. Okay, so now if we want to animate this, if we, if we want to try and move this, we click up here, maybe nothing's happening because these are just two images that we're reading in and merging together. To be able to change this TJ logo and make it move or animate on the screen, we need to give it some additional functionality. We need to use a transform node. So I'm going to select this node by left clicking so it gets a white box around it. I'm going to go over here to the nodes and go to, uh, to the merge nodes. Go to these ones that have like little triangles, like arrows, like moving around. These are the transform nodes, and we'll click on transform. So that added it right in line there for us. But maybe if you didn't have the right node selected, it put it somewhere else. So you can just connect it yourself. The source goes to the your source image, and then we'll we'll pipe it back out to the merge node. So here we go. So now we have all these options for transform. We also see that this circles appeared with these different dots that we can move around. So we can click and move this. And I want this to be right pretty close to the center. So we'll move that to the center there. These other ones just kind of like skew it out to the side. But I'm going to hit Control Z and get it back to how it was. Because I want to, I do want to scale it, but I want to scale it uh, uniformly. So I'll come over here and I see scale. It's at 100, it's scaled to 100%, which is its original size. So I could just double click here and type in uh, 0 0.5. Now it's scaled to 50%. I can also use the slider here to slide and scale it to a certain size, but I want it to be about 50%. Yours will be different because your logo image that you brought in is 
probably not the same size as mine. Mine was 800 pixels by 800 pixels, I think. All right, so that's the size I want it to be. Uh, and I'm just going to change my viewer here a little bit so I can see bigger there what's going on. So I'm going to move my merge. I'm going to move these over here just a little bit so we can see better what's going on. So great. And so now to animate this, I'm not going to worry about the text just yet. We're just going to animate this and bring it in. What I really want, I want it to start off screen over here. And then I want it to kind of like slide in and then slide out. And so I'm going to start my animation right here. So we see over here translate X and Y. That's saying where it's at. So if it was clear down the bottom left corner, it'd be, oh wait, I guess it's based off of, where is it off of? Let's see what happens. I'm trying to find out where zero, zero is. So this is a learning experience for both of us. I guess zero, zero is right there. Oh, I know why, because it's scaled. Okay, so zero, zero is the bottom left-hand corner of the of our project. But the reason it's not is because this isn't scaled. If this was scaled to 100%, then the bottom corner of my logo would be touching the bottom corner of my project. But because we scaled it to 50%, the scaling, uh, I guess, scales off of the top right corner maybe, or I don't know how that worked. But that's why it's, it looks like when it's at zero, zero, it's kind of confusing. So just uh, realize that. I just learned that. I learned that too. We're learning together, guys. All right, so anyway, um, but this translate tells you the X and Y coordinates based off of the bottom left-hand corner. So if we go any further to the left, uh, we're going to turn negative here on the X axis, which we want to do. We want to go clear over here and start about right there. We're going to right-click and go to Set Keyframe All Dimensions. This is a very important part that people forget when animating. They, they try and move their object around. If you don't set the keyframe, you're just going to move your object and it's never going to be animated or moved. So it turned blue, these numbers turned blue here. And now we're on key, we're on frame one, this is our timeline. So our total project's 250. So by the, by the middle of our 10 second video, five seconds in, I want it to be right in the center. So I'm going to come over here to about 110 frames maybe. I left click there, now we're on frame 110 and our object's still hiding over here during that time, but we want it to be moved into the middle. And we see this turned a lighter blue color. So now we can actually move this. So I can change just the X. I can put it to zero and see where it would be there. But I actually want it to be, I want to keep this at 129 because I don't want it to go up and down while it's coming in. I just want it to go straight across. So I'm only going to change the X. But let's change it to um, positive 10. Oh, I mean positive, yeah, there we go. Let's do positive 100. Let's do positive 1,000. Uh, well, let's do, so we gotta find like a good a good place for this thing to be, 800. I mean, I could drag it, but then I guess I will. I'll just keep this 129. So I'll drag it w right where I want it to be, about in the middle, and then I'll change this back to 129. Perfect. So now that should slide all the way across. We're at frame 110. If I hit the back, uh, this back triangle to go to the beginning of our project and hit play, we should see it animating and sliding in and it's a little bit choppy it might be choppy don't worry about that because this is just showing a, a an example a preview of it and the more things we get the more nodes we add and get adding in here the more laggy and slow our animation is going to look but when we render it out it'll be full speed uh, according to our project settings so full speed at 24 frames per second and it'll be nice and smooth so now I can go back here and see what's happening at any given frame between 1 and 110 where my where I set my keyframe and maybe I want it to stay here. In fact, what I what I what I want it to do, I'm going to double click on the transform node so I go back have my settings uh, in front of me and I'm going to maybe make it grow once it gets here, I want it to grow a little bit. So to do that at frame 110, actually I'll I'll wait 5 frames at frame 115. I'm going to scale it. I'm going to, uh, I want it to stay this size, grow up a little bit, and then go back down, and then go, go out of the screen. So to do that, I'm going to have it be the scale that it's at here. We're going to right click on scale and go set keyframe all dimensions. So now at frame 115, we have a keyframe for scale, but not for translate. Um, I mean, if we, if we move it, 
then these would turn a dark blue as well, and there'd be a keyframe for the for translate. But now we just have a keyframe for scale. So what we want to do, actually, if I wanted to wait five seconds, I should keep it there and then go to 20 and set another set of keyframe here at 20. All right. So now we're going to scale it up to about this size. And let's go to 30. And we'll scale it back down to 0 0.5. Perfect. So let's see what that does. Oh, that's kind of cool. So let's go back to the beginning. It animates onto the screen. It's actually animating pretty slow, but I guess that's okay. And it kind of jumps up at you. And you know what? This is just like, that was really slow. That Let's have it slide. Let's have it go off a lot faster. I like that jump though. And then at frame 150, how about? I'm gonna have it just like shoot off the screen in like 20 frames. So we'll start here. Uh, and we'll have it, uh, let's set a keyframe here. And then we'll go to frame 170. And by frame 170, we want it to be off, clear out here. We want it to stay at 129. Uh, yeah, so now we'll go back to the start and see how this looks. Okay, we have our logo animated in. It's gonna jump up a little bit and it's gonna fly off the screen. So going in was just way too slow, but I'm not going to change it just because I think you get the point. And you probably know how to change it. So if you don't like how slow that is, you know, maybe make your project uh, a little bit shorter and then you know, do something different. Anyway, but ours is done by about two, frame 200. So I'm going to come down here and change ours so that it's done by, by frame 200 instead of 250. So I just kind of shortened our project. And you know what? I said I was going to put text on, but I think I'm going to leave this video like this. I don't want to drag it out too much longer. So I'm just going to leave everything how it is there. Um, again, if you're confused on, on some of this or if you're, if you're moving things around, one of the common problems, I guess, with animating is that people will, people will do this. They'll, uh, they'll bring in, they'll read in, like if I read in another logo here. Um, well, actually, I can't do it here. <laughs> What, what I was going to say was, if you don't set the keyframe, like let's say this, let's say I want the, uh, I want it to skew now. So I, I click on at frame 140, and I'm like, hey, let's skew this image like this. And then I, and then I say, let's go to 150, and let's skew it back this way, so it'll, like, it'll wave back and forth. And then we go and play. Well, now look, it's just skewed that way. The whole time, it's just skewed, the whole project. It's not animating skewed back and forth like I, I want it to do. I want it to do this, you know, animate. But a lot, so the, the, a problem people when they're first starting run into is they don't set the keyframe. And so if it's not blue, dark blue, or light blue, if it's just gray like this, you can do it all you want, but it's not gonna, it's just gonna stay there. If it's gray, it's gonna stay there the entire project. It's gonna stay wherever you set it. If it's light blue, it means it's changing and it's being affected by different keyframes of the project. So now let's render this out though. So we're gonna, let's put this back to normal. I think it was zero, yeah. Put this back to zero how it was. So to render this, we need a right node. So instead of the viewer, we're going to be using a right node. So to do that, we click up here on these image nodes and go to right, and it brings up this dialog box and says, where, where do you wanna write? Where on your computer? So it's very important that we don't write out a, a sequence unless you want a sequence. But what a sequence will do is write out images for every frame. It'll create a picture, like a JPEG picture for every image of this. It'll create like 200 pictures and save them to our desktop and just flood our desktop with individual pictures. Um, to do that, you have to use like a, a pound sign. And, and everywhere where a pound sign appears in your file name, it'll show a, it'll, a different incremental number like one, two, three, four, five. But we're not going to be doing that. We'll do that in a later video. If we want this to, to be on file. So, so make sure this is file. This can stay absolute. And then we'll just write down the name of what we, or type out the name of what we want it to be called. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'll call it um, introvid.mp4. And as soon as I type in mp4, it changes the file type automatically to mp4 down here, which is what we want. And I can just click save. So now, our right node has settings too over here, or properties that we can look at. 
we need to tie it in. So right now it's going to the viewer. What we could do is just tie this in to the merge node too. And now everything our viewer is seeing, is that right? Yeah, everything our viewer is seeing is also going out to our right node. So uh, let's try and write this out. I think, I think we're good. We wanna make sure that our frames per second on our project, so 24 frames per second, matches the frames per second that we're writing out which is 24 frames per second here, which is good. Um, these are the codecs we're using. We're not gonna change those. Although if, depending on the system you're on, if you're on Mac or Linux, sometimes your codecs, if you're having trouble when you render your video out, you might need to change these codecs. So instead of MP4, you use like an MOV uh, or something else, or the container or the codec. Uh, what else? So we're rendering the entire project. So it's gonna go from frame one to 250. We could also manually just render out like the first 100 frames, or we can go frame 50 to frame 125, but we're just gonna do the full project. Uh, yeah, so let's just do this. So we'll click render, and it's gonna go through every node. It brings up this progress bar. So to get back to our node graph, we can just click here, but we're in the progress right now, and it's showing we're 35% done. Uh, it's rendering frames one to 200, it's gonna take 15 more seconds till it's complete, and it tells us where it's rendering it to. So that's great. So this is just about done, and we'll go watch the video. I'm just gonna change, the, change this a little bit. We'll drag this over here so we can see. Okay, 100% finished, and here's our video here on the desktop. So I'm gonna minimize Natron now, and we'll open this video and see how it looks. Cool. So that's actually pretty awesome, except that it goes way too slow, right? It goes really, really slow, but then it, I, I love the, the jump and the slide outs fast. I was just too slow animating it in. Um, and then what you can do is throw this into a video editor, add some sound to it, like a little bouncy sound or something, and we've got a cool little intro video. So I kind of went over that quick, and I hope I explained a lot of that stuff well enough. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you watching this video. Um, I really appreciate you watching, watching these video tutorials. It's a lot of fun to make them, and I hope that you find value in them. If you do, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. Comment below. I'll try and interact with you and uh, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, go ahead and leave suggestions for videos you'd like me to make. And, uh, yeah, keep watching the tutorials. We'll catch you in the next video.